good. Hold strong. Get a good push last two minutes, all right? Work on that last point three. So we're here in Camp Verde with Emily Durgan. You've done a little bit of track, a little bit of grass, and then you've had a lot of success on the roads. Now you're about to debut on the marathon. Uh, how excited are you for that? Uh, yeah, I'm super excited. Training's been going well. Um, did my whole build here in Flagstaff. So honestly, just excited to kind of like take all that energy to the start line and gosh, just about a week now. So you've ran 67.54 at Houston and a half. Yep. Did that kind of like persuade you to go to the marathon now or what kind of made you go to the marathon? Yeah, for sure. Coming off that race about a year ago in January, um, I definitely had a lot of confidence in the longer distances. So um, the training for, for that half was kind of similar to like the build that we've done for this marathon. Obviously we've added in um, some more quality long runs, but I think like finishing that half, being like really surprised, um, you know, going into that race, we didn't really put a time limit on myself. Like I just wanted to go and compete and then to come away with a sub 68 half was like super great for my confidence. So that definitely made me think, all right, let's uh, try to tackle this marathon. What kind of made you pick New York to be your first one? So going back to being like an athlete that just like loves to compete, I felt like New York was that environment, especially over the years that I've actually been in New York for Marathon Weekend. I've run the Abbott Dash 5K a handful of times. Like it truly is just like a race that the athletes are competing. You know, there's there's no pacers, there's no time trialing. Like um, more than likely, nobody's gonna set an American record on New York course. It's just like raw competition, and that's like really speaks to like my style of racing. So I figured for my first one like let's throw pace out the window let's just uh compete and like see how many bodies i can beat at the end of the day yeah so how's the build kind of gone how'd you kind of approach going to marathon training after just training for like five and ten k's yeah for sure so going back to kind of like building in some of those like long hard run effort workouts like where we did 20 miles of volume on the day with like eight of that being like really quality work um so it's kind of weird like i've done both of those work out separately like I've run 20 miles and I've done like eight mile hard tempos but like kind of bringing that all together to get ready for this marathon has been like the biggest change but also uh work that I'm very similar with what's the normal training week kind of look like for you you're on a seven day cycle or oh we kind of did like a two week cycle if that makes sense so like every other week we'd have an easy like long run and then the opposite week we'd have like a hard long run workout on Saturday so it kind of flip-flopped so we do basically a week where we had like Monday vo2 session Thursday like uh, endurance run Saturday uh, like a long run workout like I explained and then the following week which would be like this week we did like a vo2 workout Tuesday um, today I did like just like a straight six mile tempo and then like a normal long run Sunday so we kind of like it was more of like a two week uh, cycle if that makes sense. Yeah. So what kind of shape do you feel like you're in? Do you think this is the best shape you've been in your whole life or? <laughs> it, it's kind of hard. It's kind of hard to know. Like I even asked Terrence that after like my last workout uh, about two weeks ago and he said that like you just like never know. Um, so especially going into New York, like I said, if we were if we were getting ready for Chicago, you know, I'd be running a lot of mile repeats, probably like 525, 530, really nailing down my marathon pace. But um, it might sound really weird, but for this build, like I have not run marathon pace like at all. It's kind of like, it's either faster than marathon pace or like slower than marathon pace up in Flagstaff, um, like on rolling terrain for New York. So it's kind of hard to know what kind of shape I'm in, but I definitely feel, yeah, confident in, in like the long run. So I think that will help. I think like it's a bit drop, I think we thought yeah. at the end of the year might be a little slow. Oh, and, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, these are the Pro 3s, so this is like the actually the exact shoe that I'm racing in, so that's why I'm wearing them today, just to make sure they're broken in enough and feel good, and don't give me blisters. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so today's workout is just the six mile tempo. The goal is like to start at marathon effort pace, which here in Camp Verde, we're thinking like 5.30s. Um, I'm gonna practice grabbing a bottle, running that pace at like three mile. And then if I feel good, just kind of like pick it up to get the legs turning over the last couple miles. Um, start out with a few 200s, which was a nice way to warm up. And I have a few of my teammates here, Holly and Taryn, that are gonna jump in 
and do a little bit of the tempo. So nothing crazy. Last kind of session before New York. So just going to have fun with it and feel good. Are you jumping in with them? I'm just going to run behind them. Yep. Cool. Look at the horse when they go. Aww. Are they best pals? Yeah. Oh, look at them. <laughs> They're kind of like nestling around. Yeah, she's okay. okay. I'm doing 5.50 fashion, just so you know. Yeah, yeah. I'll give her like 30 <laughs> seconds. Yeah. And then with Paul running? He's six months. Six months. I know what pace. Five minute pace, five ten. Okay. Start at five ten, five or five. Five or five. And get down to like sub five. Hold on, how long? We'll see. <laughs> I just gotta beat you, that's my goal. <laughs> how many seconds are you giving Paul? Alright, Holly. So you can know. <laughs> Get a little nervous. What is he getting? I haven't ran this course in a while, so hopefully I don't. Need I haven't run this course. <laughs> good? Or well, he's You're he's good in. now. Now, okay. last two minutes all right work on that last point three because <sighs> yeah I can't be like 1509 through that Thought, I think yeah. <coughs> and then I ran 30, 18, so. Oh, good. Whew. That was tough. Nice job. Good job. It, it's self induced tough when you go out in 514. Yeah, I know. That is the issue. Uh, I'm glad this race starts up the hill. Yeah. I still average right at 520. Yeah. yeah. You're at altitude. Definitely. Yeah. Easier down the hill. Because on long runs, I've never really felt that. Right. Guess we just gotta hope the first six miles isn't 520. Oh gosh. <laughs> this is ready to go. <laughs> yeah, except for like mentally, I've I've averaged 520 for six miles on this loop many times before. So oh, I think that like, I, like okay. in my mind, I like knew I wanted to do that. You have to, you're like, I need to run 520. Yeah, I yeah. Know. which is kind of bad to think that way, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but again, I think that was like, I don't think I went like over the top. Like I yeah, think it was yeah. within, in the reach, you know. But yeah, I mean, it definitely, 
Running 520 and marathon pace, it definitely felt like hard. But I feel like everything in the marathon taper starts to feel hard because right. you're already like, it's like you already know what you have like next weekend. I know, I think. You know, it's yeah. like because you think it should feel easy, but then running 520 isn't easy. You know what I mean? Right, right. It's when you're like, oh, it's only like easy. Miles. Yeah. So I think you're already in that. I feel like I'm in that, that way. Stage. Yeah. That's so what I'm like trying to like remind myself because it's not like I was like completely dead, but like, yeah, like I had to try. Like, yeah. I, you because know, you like, just think it should be like, you're like six breeze. miles, it should be like. Right. Miles. But like, I was yeah. able to, like, talk to Terrence, like, at each Oh, I heard, I heard your voice, like, really early. I'm like, wow, she's catching this back. Yeah. And, like, each, like, little one, I was able to, like, say a few words. So that's how I knew I wasn't, like, dying. Yeah. But then, yeah. The last, like, point three, he's like, all right, get the turnover going. And then that's when I was like, oh, I don't, like, you just didn't want to. It's, see, it's more, like, almost like yeah. mental because you're just ready to, like, taper it. Right, right. Yeah. So hopefully that, yeah. But no, it, it was, yeah, it felt good. I grabbed a bottle. Oh, okay, great. Now it's it, Yes, yes. It, but I will say it was really weird drinking it, running that fast. It's like, it is like a little bit different. Than like yeah. an easy long run. Yeah. Because honestly, like, yeah. oh, towards But me. I feel like you're going like harder than marathon pace, though. So At least like, on the front end, true. Yeah. Because yeah. it was weird, like the last like three minutes, like I almost started to feel like a little sick. Like, ooh, like yeah. running, you know, sub 520 pace, like you feel that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, it'll be fine. That was the only. Yeah. yeah, but I like forced myself to drink the whole thing because I was just curious what it would feel like. Oh, okay. <laughs> Wait, so how many ounces did you drink? Four. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I guess that's not like too much. No, 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 no. That's like right on. But running that pace, it was kind of challenging. Yeah. So post workout, that was kind of just marathon pace tempo. How'd it go for you? And are you happy with that workout? Yeah, for sure. So it was kind of just like our last little workout. It wasn't meant to be super hard. We were originally going to do it up in Flagstaff, which um definitely probably would have kept me a little bit um more honest i guess when you come down to camp verde you kind of just like the sun's out the weather's perfect you just tend to maybe go a little too hard on the front end so yeah the goal was to like run 5 30 and then just try to cut it down um into like the 520s and i kind of like did the opposite and went out too hard and ran like a 5 13 first mile but i was able to settle back in and, and averaged right at the 520 um you know kind of slowing down those middle miles and being able to push to be uh right around like 5 17 5 18 for that last mile so that makes me feel good uh, got my legs burning a little bit grabbed a bottle at mile three and drank it running sub 530 pace which definitely felt a little weird so <laughs> i think overall mm -hmm. it, it was it was fine but at the end of the day it really it really means nothing just wanted to feel good so you've had a lot of success on the roads this year. Do you think your time on the track's coming to an end or do you have any plans for next year to stay on the track? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I don't really think I'll necessarily ever run like a championship style race again. Um, I might kind of put the spikes on and try to see how fast I can run a 5K or 10K like in a build um, for like road racing. But yeah, I never want to say never because there's some great examples like Sarah Hall, uh, who's kind of done that, has gone back and forth. So I think it's smart to never like, and even like Emily Sisson's done it in the past couple years. So I think, yeah, they're definitely big idols of mine. So I just want to kind of not say never and yeah, keep seeing what the years bring. Sweet. Uh, good luck in New York and thanks for having me up. Thank you.